Hi everybody, it's Julie and I thought I'd go over how to assemble the 3D mini mailbox. Now here it is at its original size, which is two inches wide and two inches deep, and it's about three and a half inches tall. And I do have a video showing how I enlarged it to a size that's large enough to accommodate tucking a gift card inside. And as I show you how to assemble, I decided it would be easier to uh, model the the bigger one because it's just easier to see all the details. So I also have um, the label, which has been cut from some foil cardstock. I have a little mini 1 8 inch brad. I've got some foam tape. And my other adhesives are the Barely Art Precision Craft Glue, which you can use if you want, but sometimes you want some instant stick'em. And the best adhesive I've found for instant really durable stick'em has been this um, double-sided sticky tape. You can tear it, you don't have to cut it with your fingers, and it's super strong bonding, and I love it for putting boxes together. Okay, so to go over these pieces, we've got the sides here, and these things that are gonna form the curvature of the top of the mailbox. We've got the little door hatch, so this is the front of the box, and this is gonna come over the top, and we have a slot here, or a slit, or a tab. <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna go inside the slit. It's gonna tuck right inside this piece right here as we're assembling the back. And then we have the bottom piece. Now I've gone ahead and already um, pre-folded the score lines here on this project, but um, it can help to use a straight edge like a ruler. If you're trying to get those fold lines, you know, nice and crisp, you can get them started like that with a straight edge. And when it comes to these curved lines right here, I just use my finger. There's no score line here on the curvature, but it will follow the curvature by just sticking your finger right there. So let's do this side. Okay. And you'll notice that all my flaps have been folded on these pieces from the front towards the back. Okay. So that's gonna be key when you're assembling this. Now we wanna get adhesive. And like I said, I'm using this double-sided uh, sticky tape. I'm gonna put adhesive on all the flaps along the outside edges here. So I will come back when I have that done and you can see the placement of all the adhesive. Okay, now you can see that I've got my adhesive and these were all applied to the front side of these flaps because they're gonna get tucked under and behind the other, other pieces and then you won't see those flaps or the adhesive. So I have put adhesive on these bottom flaps here and then on each side and I left a gap right up here and you'll see why as I'm assembling the box, why there's just a bit of a gap there. And then I've got adhesive on these two tabs right here. You don't necessarily need to put it on these. You can if you want, but I find I like it better. They're just there for support for the top as it comes over um, the mailbox. But here's where you really wanna anchor things right here. And then if you leave this without adhesive, it gives you a lot more uh, room when you open the back to tuck things inside or fill it with little goodies. Okay. And I don't know if I mentioned this, I can't remember if I did, but there are two little um, webbings here, or this is kind of a perforated line, and it's not perforated all the way, there's just two little bits of web cardstock right there to hold that lid shut, and then while you're assembling it, it's not gonna pop open, and then when the recipient pulls on that lid, it will pop those webbing so that they can open up the little door and access the stuff that's inside. And of course, you'll have the back opening too if they don't wanna you know, pop it open that way. Okay, so um, another thing I wanted to mention is that it's a lot easier to add things like this little brad before you put the box together because it's gonna be on the inside. So there's a little hole here. I'm gonna slip that brad right through the middle and then, oops, it fell out. Let's get it through the middle there and then flip that over to the back. And to make it loose enough, that it doesn't uh, get so tight that you can't get your, you know, like your fingers around it to to uh, pull on it. I'm going to use a little, um, this is just a little piercing tool that's going to allow me to curve these down without um, making it too tight. 
So that's what this is for. And then I'm going to pull this one over here. And sometimes, depending on the uh, brads that you've bought, so you can see how it has a little bit of give there on the front side. You want a little bit of give. So the reason for that um, is just to get your fingernails underneath it. But also, if your uh, prongs back here on the back side of your brad are really long and they're extending like way beyond out here, you can use a pair of these really nifty Tim Holtz scissors. They're pretty heavy duty to just get in there and snip those ends down if you're worried that um, they extend too far or if you're afraid that maybe because they're sharp, little hands will get a scratch or a cut on them. Um, it's not usually a problem, but, and you can also like cover it with a piece of tape if that, you know, is a concern. Okay, so anyway, Here's how we go about putting everything together. This is the bottom and it needs to get glued on down here. I have a piece of tape along this flap. I'm going to peel that back and I'm going to use, whoops, there we go. Okay, so it's going to get adhered right here to form the bottom and I need to make sure that it doesn't go beyond this, um, what do you call it? In in indent <laughs> this space right here this is where the actual bottom of the box is going to be so I'm going to attach that by using that as a guide to get you know lined up in the center there and along that bottom edge I have a hard time talking while I'm making something at the same time so this, it'll be interesting to see how I get through this <laughs> Okay, so got that all lined up and I suppose there's an even easier way to do that that I didn't think of but you know there we go. So we got that lined up and you can see how that's going to form the bottom of the box as these sides and such come together. So the next thing I wanted to mention is that um, we want to get these sides put together. So I'm just going to make sure that I'm lined up nice and straight and sometimes when you crease your fold lines your paper kind of wants to go a little bit wonky so you can just double check to make sure that those full lines are running straight the way they should and reinforce them with a bone folder if you need to but to attach this to the back side here I'm just gonna fold that flap over and then this is going to get laid down right here along that edge. And the reason why I did not want to have adhesive right, right here at the top, tippy top of that, is because when this comes over, I don't want this part right here to get glued to that side flap there. So, okay, so let's get, whoop. You can always add a little bit more tape if you need to, but I think it's better. So I'm going to go ahead and peel that back. And I always like to kind of crease that a little bit just to make sure that I'm getting things lined up where they should be. So I'm just lining that up right there and then I can go ahead and remove that liner tape. And then to connect them, this one's going to get fold over this way and this edge will come over and across to that side. So let's make sure we're getting all lined up proper. Okay. And you can also remove part of that liner just a bit. This gives you a little bit of fudge room because this tape is really strong and once it's down, it is down. Okay, and then go ahead, press that firmly. Okay, now the next thing to do, and I'm going to do it while this is still flat, is to go ahead and mount the front onto the box. It's just a lot easier to do that um, while it's still flat. And I've already got foam mounting tape on the back of this, so I'm just going to pull that up. Where's my tweezers? My tweezers are a lot easier. I live... I live by these tweezers, I swear, when I'm crafting. 
um, they get a hold of things. And even though I finally have a little bit of fingernails, I can't get a hold of anything. So, all right, now I'm gonna pull this down a little closer so I can look right on top of it. And hopefully my head doesn't get in the way of the camera. And don't press firmly until you're sure you've got it where you want it. There we go. Okay, that's looking good. All right, now this is gonna be much easier to finish off. So let's take this side here. And I like to start here and work my way down to the bottom part of the box. I just think that's a lot easier than sealing up the bottom. So I have a little bit more, you know, fudge room while I'm working. And I'm gonna take these little adhesive tabs off. You can actually, well, let's wait a minute here. Let's do it like this. I'm gonna rotate this and so I can show you at a better angle what I'm doing. There we go. So it's gonna follow that curvature. And then let's do this side too. So I think it's easier if you work just one tab at a time instead of trying to glue them all at once. There we go. Press firmly to get that to hold. Now if you were using glue, you'd have to give it some setup time, which is fine if you have the time, but if you're always like last minute Lucy like me, <laughs> <laughs> you want the stuff that sticks real fast. You don't have to wait for it to dry. Okay, so now I've got the top secured. Go ahead and get the other one done. See how nice it is to get in there with some tweezers instead of trying to get your fingers in there? Okay, and then I like to leave these unglued because they're really there for support more than anything else. And you can glue them if you want to, but I find it gives me a bit more room in there for tucking things inside. And now I'm just gonna curl this just a little bit with my fingernails. You don't have to, but I find it's easier if you have it curl up just a little bit when you're trying to tuck that little slot in there. Okay, let's get the bottom done. So this is what the bottom is looking like right now. And I need to get this. This is just all gonna go tucked down in there, like that. And the reason why those flaps are here on these pieces right here, so that this doesn't get pushed all the way into the box and result in, you know, a wonky bottom. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna put it face down on my work surface and get those tabs removed and then fold that up Oop, let's get this one too okay now as we start to slide that in you can see how those tabs there are going to help keep that box nice and uh, the bottom nice and flush and straight so let's just kind of work that down in there come on like I said, don't press firmly until you're sure you've got it where you want it, because once it's down, it's down. There we go. Okay. So now we can press on those firmly, and if you need to, you can also get inside with your fingers and press the sides down a little bit better. So that was just kind of a way of making the bottom 
reinforced and strong for holding whatever you might put inside there. But a gift card will fit. And I wish I had one handy to throw in there to show you, but. <laughs> okay. We're gonna go ahead and slide that into the back. And there's our 3D mailbox. So cute. Okay, I hope that helps and thanks for watching.